Ah, fiddle again, and hello, it's Fo. On Monday, we looked at combo decks in Magic the Gathering. What we're going to do is we're going to play a few games with our deck, trying to fling our Enigma Drake at our opponent. The versus system doesn't seem to be working today to play against a random person online. It's just not happening. So we're going to have to play against the computer. We'll play a few games on hard, uh, and we'll see how it goes against the computer opponent. Games against the computer tend to run a little bit longer, um, so I'll try and chop it down as best I can. We'll try and stick to half an hour max. Ideally, we would like access to all three colours of our mana base in our opening hand, but an Evolving Wilds and one is usually good enough if we have either Take Inventory or we have Grapple with the Past. That's brilliant, an island off the top means we can go and get a forest with our Evolving Wilds. And now we have access to all three colours. So we have a couple of uh, cheap burn spells. The opponent's going to cycle. So we can deal with our, our opponent's early threats. We should get out the wall first, our thing in the ice. And then we've got four instant or sorceries that we can play after to flip the wall and get in with some much needed damage. Our opponent, turn three, is going to get a Drake Haven. So it's going to be a Drake versus Drake match. So our opponent, whenever they cycle or discard a card, they can pay and create a Drake token, which is the 2 2 flying token. Good thing about uh, token generation is that we can bounce all the tokens back to their hand. And of course, they will fizzle when they get there. Because tokens aren't cards themselves, you can't cast them from your hand because they have no casting cost. So if a token is bounced back to hand, it just disappears. It fizzles away. Now we've got our own Drake. We're in no rush to cast anything because our opponent hasn't cast anything. We generally want to save the Drake in our hand until we're ready to fling it. If we cast the drake and it gets killed by our opponent, then we're in trouble. We need to go and dig it back out of the graveyard with one of our spells. Here on our end step, our opponent cycles and creates a drake so they can attack with it next turn. But we're just going to instantly fizzle it. Burn it into two. opponent's getting out the Festering Mummy, which makes us both discard a card. I think we can discard our second forest. Don't think we're going to need that uh, immediately. Opponent discards a kill spell, that seems like a terrible idea. They do want to cycle or discard most of their cards, but getting rid of the uh, kill spells is probably a bad idea. We bounce everything back to hand. We could do some damage. Making our opponent discard their hands is a terrible idea, because that's what they want to do. Seems like the best play to do some damage though. So we'll burn away the non token guy so we won't get bounced by the wall or our bounce spell. He'll die before that happens. When we cast our next instant or sorcery, if we target our opponent's creature with a burn spell, the effect of it getting bounced by the wall flipping over happens before the burn spell results. So we don't really want to waste a burn spell trying to kill one of our opponent's creatures that's just going to bounce back to hand anyway. Right, and this could be troublesome. So this creature has hexproof for the first spell that you throw at it. If we try to throw a burn spell at it, it won't resolve. It'll get countered. And you have to target it with two spells in a row on the same turn in order to get rid of it. We've got our crush, but we're a little short. 
do have a one mana spell, but I think it's time to use it. So as as you'll see, the wall flips, they go back to hand, and the spell's still on the stack waiting to resolve. And then because its target has disappeared, the spell just fizzles and goes nowhere. But that's what it takes. Sometimes it takes uh, wasting a spell like that in order to flip the wall. <laughs> Again, we could get the Drake out, but we're in no rush. So our opponent's going to get back out this guy. Our spells that say all don't target the creature specifically, so they'll be able to bounce it or destroy it. It's only when the spell says target that it affects that card. So rather than letting our opponent block with a drake, we're going to stop timer so we can get right in about there and destroy the drake before it moves to the blocking stage. So it can't be used as a blocker, and our opponent has to get rid of their awesome flyer. And they can bring it back with the Embalm ability, but at that point it's a token, then it'll be easily bounced away. So our opponent's gonna exile a card out of my graveyard, or it's gonna be the own graveyard. That again is a terrible idea. May as well get rid of one of our cards from our graveyard. Take down our instant and sorcery count in there, but that's computer AI for you. Another land in. Now we can get up to crush mana. We're going to swing in, see what our opponent does. Looks like they can't create another drake just to block it, and they're gonna have to use the zombie. Opponent cycles, makes another drake. Very drake heavy match. Opponent's going to get him for two. No great concern to us. Another great creature for the cycling deck. Whenever our opponent cycles or discards a card, they can pay one and put a minus one, minus one counter on one of our creatures. And now the Trial of Knowledge lets them draw three cards and then discard one. Now we're going to use the ability to bring our... Uh, Awoken Horror down by 1-1. One, one. Now they've got that Aftermath card in their graveyard that they can use. That again, doesn't concern us that much. Try and swing in and then bounce everything, but... I might to get blocked. Excellent. So because our opponent is blocked with them, they go to the graveyard. When we bounce everything, that card will be in our opponent's hand. So we're getting out to the, the god. It's a 5-5 five, five flyer, but it can't attack or block unless our opponent has uh, 7 cards in their hand. The full hand. Which they now do. And then don't. So if they'd kept seven cards in hand, it would have been wise. But then they'd need to keep seven cards in hand for every time they want to use it. I think they've got enough time to rise from the tides for six. So now we're presenting lethal. They're going to have to do something about it. Are they enough blockers to stop these army of zombies coming at them? They're swinging in because they've got seven cards. Can't see how they're going to be able to 
to get us all the way down. Okay, that is annoying. Let's get back out our wall. Take a counter off it. We've got two cards because we've already got take inventory, one copy in our graveyard. This first would be good. But of course we've not left ourselves a blue mana. They're embalming the Glyph Keeper, and that's fine because it can get bounced. Swinging in for the five, I'm going to put us down to six. Right, we've got Grapple. and use all these instants or sorceries to flip. So if we play our first spell, you can see it gets countered. And then we play our second spell. It won't be. So I have to play two spells in order to target it. But we got there. Now we can grapple with the past. Take our final counter off. And swing in for lethal. Ah, let's get back the Drake. Why not? Handful of Drakes to beat Drake Haven. So we didn't see Fling for the whole game. We didn't get a chance to play our Drake up opponent, but we got there with the wall. So we'll move on to the next game, see if we can uh, get our combo on the go. Again here, one land and Evolving Wilds is going to be enough. Because we've got a forest and Evolving Wilds and grapple with the past, we can grapple on turn two to get our Evolving Wilds back and then use that to get the third source of land. Ah, brilliant. Another island off the top, just the way we like it. So we can go get our red mana with this. Now we'll have access to all three colours. Turn two we can grapple with the past, get the Evolving Wilds back. So we can play it again, get our second blue or our second red when we need it. No indication yet of what our opponent is up to. Instance or sorceries in our graveyard already. It's a good start. So we're gonna want that second red, I think is gonna be the choice. We're probably gonna want to play Ravaging Blaze before we're gonna crush the tentacles. Again, it depends on what our opponent's gonna do. Get tapped land. So this Nissa costs one blue, one green, and X, where X is the number of loyalty counters it starts with. So for our opponent it's going to be one, but they have a plus ability that lets them go up by two loyalty points to scry two. So Planeswalker is going to go up to three loyalty. Thankfully we have Devouring Flames in our hand, which can do five damage to target creature or Planeswalker. So we're going to go ahead and use that now. If we wait a couple of turns, Denissa's loyalty is going to get up to 5 and then 7. It's going to get out of our range for burning. So we'll take a mountain back to our hand. We'll put ourselves uh, back a turn in terms of land drops. But it's worth it to get rid of Denissa now. Because as I say, probably won't be able to get rid of it later. The opponent gets out our favourite flying creature, the Glyph Keeper.
because our grapple with the past put a take inventory into our graveyard, when we uh, cast this one, we're going to draw two cards. Thankfully, we've got another land. We can keep going towards our high-end uh, spells. We've got eight cards in our hand at the moment. So we're going to have to discard one at the end of our turn. We can only have seven cards maximum in our hand. We're happy to discard the Drake because we have Pulse and Marasa and we can just get it back at the same time as gaining 6 life. Opponent's going to swing in. Ah, Sphinx. More Sphinxes. So big blue Sphinxes is what our opponent is playing it seems. Get out of this now because we're in no rush to cast a five mana spell. We do want crush at six, so. So we're going to gain six life and get our Drake back to our hand. We have double fling, so we have our combo. Just got to look for our moment. comes the team. Take nine damage. Okay, so our opponent is presenting lethal. We're gonna have to do it this turn. We have to do something now. We're gonna have to be crush. Gives us a couple of turns. Opponent's getting back out the trample feature. Which we're going to burn. We're going to spend all our mana on it as much as we can because it's the next spell. So we're going to do 5 damage to the feature. And because we have spell mastery, it's going to do 5 damage to that creature's controller, our opponent. Champion Ronus is good. Our opponent can exert it when they attack, meaning it doesn't untap during their next untap step. And that means that they can put a creature card from their hand directly on the battlefield. And now our opponent's given the creature haste, so it can attack straight away, use the exert ability straight away, and then get out a creature. So I thought we were going to have an extra turn before it attacked. Got our sneaky opponent there. Even at haste with that red cartouche. Now we've got Radiant Flames. Radiant Flames will get rid of the Sphinx, but won't get rid of the Champion of Ronus. Champion of Ronus is exerted, which means it won't untap during our opponent's next step. So it won't be able to attack us. The Glyph Keeper will be dead, so it won't be able to attack us. Could get out the Drake ready to fling next turn. See if we've got enough mana left open, it's okay to cast the Drake because we can fling it in response. If our opponent uh, plays a spell that's going to kill our Drake, we can cast fling in response and do some extra damage and negate our opponent's play. And it looks like they're embalming, they're not going to try and get rid of the Drake. And Displacement Wave lets us win. Displacement Wave costs X and 2 blue. So for 2 blue and X we can bounce all creatures with casting cost X or less back to their hand. We could bounce everything back to hand but then we wouldn't have our Drake. If we bounce creatures with 0 casting cost it will only bounce the flyer. So if we spend 2 blue and nothing it bounces the flyer which gets rid of it and leaves us free to combo off. So we attack him with the Drake for 11. And then post combat, we cast Bling and just throw the Drake at our opponent. That's about 11 damage. 
Game one. Combo achieved. All right, game three, going for three in a row. See our opening hand. One evolving wild isn't going to do it. Although we've got grapple with the past. And our opponent's playing first, so we get to draw a card. But no, we can't really keep that. It's too much of a gamble. This is fine. Much better. So we can evolve in wilds for a blue first. No island off the top for us this time. So we've got the wall and two plays to make after it. Get out the green first, just in case we get grappled with the past or Pulse Marasa. Well, now that we've got red spell, we probably want to switch up. This way we can play grapple with the past and our burn spell next turn if we need to. Our opponents love to cycle. And play tapped lands. Okay, it's going to be in bam creature time. So we did get our grapple. I think we should go ahead and do both. So grapple first, put some things into the graveyard. We get back the evolving wild, but we may as well get back this. Just as good really. We're not in an immediate rush for one of our colours of mana, so we can play Galvanic Bombardment at any time, so we can wait for the creature to attack to play it. Double take inventory is great. So we'll play one. It's getting counterspelled. It's unusual to counterspell a, a card that's only drawing you a card. Seems a bit of a waste of a counterspell, but when it's tapped out, they can't do it again because we've already got one in the graveyard. We get to draw two cards. Double Galvanic is good. So we're going to go for pieces of the puzzle. Can get an Evolving Wilds because we don't need the 5 mana. We're not going to need to double Galvanic this turn. So we'll get a second Forest. Get pieces of the puzzle on the go. flip our wall. So it looks like our opponent is playing counter spells. <laughs> counter spells and a couple of creatures. That's fine, we've still got our wall flipped. In comes the Awoken Horror. <laughs> Eat Kraken opponent. So if they just cast back out uh, a blocker, then we can burn it and get through again. Which it looks like they're going to do. We can burn it end step. Unless we're countered. Of course, I forgot that our opponent is running only counter spells and one creature by the looks of it. Oh, we got everything. Opponent's tapped out so they can't counter, which makes me want to play the Drake now so it doesn't get counter spelled. The chances of one of our opponent's last two cards being a counter spell seems pretty high because they've shown us so many counter spells. We'll get the Drake out first while our opponent has no mana available. Burn away the guy, swing in. <laughs> Next
next turn we're presenting lethal. So they're going to have to do something. Trial of Knowledge doesn't help them whatsoever. Let them draw three cards, discard one. Even if they play a land now, it's not going to matter because they don't have any one costing spells that are going to affect us. They're not going to be able to get rid of our creatures for one mana. Easy victory. So no fling, but we did really need it. And that's our combo deck. On Monday we're going to look at the milling strategy using Sphinx's tutelage. Then we're going to abandon jewels for a little bit and move on to Magic Arena, which is the new game, which is still in the beta development stage, but they're dropping the NDA, so we're able to publish videos showing off Magic Arena. It's far enough along in its uh, development now that they're quite happy to let people show it. So next Monday we'll have one more on jewels, and then we'll move on to Arena. See you then.